Calabayo Manifold, welcome. As you'll know, I've been struggling somewhat with quantum physics. I've been trying to incorporate, incorporate it within my thinking, and whilst trying my best not to engage in scientism, i.e. misquoting science to support my beliefs. Although, of course, that's always a difficult thing, because I'll always be accused of not understanding the science. And I don't. Essentially, I see quantum physics as the ultimate twist in enlightenment materialism. That is the attempt to see everything in a mechanistic way. It therefore provides some vignettes regarding the paranormal and spiritual, whilst not completely abandoning this materialism. Nevertheless, the deeper quantum theory goes, the more profound its insights appear to be. And I've recently come across the Calabar Yao Manifold, and I believe this to be one such profound insight that I wanted to share with you. Oh, what is the Calabi Yao Manifold? What a good question. What is the Calabi Mao Manifold? In algebraic geometry, a Calabi Yao Manifold is known as a Calabi Yao space. And it's a particular type of manifold which has properties such as Ricci flatness, a yielding applications in theoretical physics. The name was coined by Calendus et al after, in 1985, after Eugenio Calabi, um, his publications from 54 and 57, who first conjectured that such surfaces might exist, and Xing Tong Yao in 1978, who provided the Calabi conjecture. When Yao first learned about general relativity, he realised that it posed an interesting theoretical question. Could there be space-time which contains no matter, a vacuum in which there is still gravity? The space-time we live in is not the only one that's possible in terms of general relativity. Einstein's field equations which describe relativity also permit other solutions. For example, a space-time without matter and without gravity in which nothing happens at all. The question was whether a vacuum spacetime, which still has some curvature and therefore gravity, was it, was it also possible? Essentially, Calabi manif uh, ma Yao manifolds are shapes that satisfy the requirement of space for the six unseen spatial dimensions of string theory, which may be smaller than our currently observable lengths as they've not yet been detected. A popular alternative known as large extra dimensions, which often occurs in a brainwave models, uh, is, the, is the, that the Calabi Yao is large, but we're confined to a small subset, that which intersects with the deep brain. In string theory and other related theories, a brain is a physical object that generalizes the notion of a point particle to a higher dimension. In string theory, deep brains are an important class of brains that arise when one considers open strings. As an open string propagates through time-space, its endpoints are required to lie on a deep brain. Further extensions into higher dimensions are currently being explored, with additional ramifications for general relativity. Dimensions. Superstring theory is a unified theory for all the forces of nature, including quantum gravity. In superstring theory, the fundamental building block is an extended object, namely a string, whose vibrations could rise to the particle encountered in nature. Uh, the constraints for the consistency of such a theory are extremely stringent. Uh, they would require in particular that the theory takes place in a 10-dimensional space. 
Uh, to make contact with our four-dimensional world, it's expected that the ten-dimensional space-time of string theory is locally the product of m4 times x of a four-dimensional Minkowski space 3m1 with six-dimensional space x. The six-dimensional space x would be tiny, would it, which would explain why it has not been detected so far in experimental energy levels. Each choice of the internal space X leads to a different effective theory on the four-dimensional Minkowski space M M31, which should be a theory describing our world. And therefore, Calabi Mao manifold, Yao manifolds provide additional dimensions to quantum physics, especially string theory, meaning that the necessary equations can now be reconciled. So far, models have been reduced and recon uh, produced and reconciled for six dimensions, but further the uh, dimensions are being researched to ten dimensions. Now, of course, I've argued that the spirits, spirits of the paranormal belong to these other dimensions. We're unable to really see them as they're from these other dimensions. So just as a 3D object becomes a line in 2Ds, 2D, these multiple dimensional objects seem strange in our 3D world, or at least the appearance of 3D that we have because of I have argued previously that maybe our world is 2D with the appearance of being 3D through the hologram. Uh, these objects don't therefore appear credible to us. Too often we, sim we do see them but simply fail to process them because they seem so incredible. I've even hypothesised, although this is really me engaging in explaining the, that which others have sought to categorise, the gin of 3.5 or 4D and angels belong to a much higher dimension and that is why it's said that gin can fool humans that they're angels now I'm not necessarily I'm using that as an illustration because I do sort of attempt to explain some of these other theories from the paranormal that I don't necessarily completely subscribe to so the manifold, yeah, so the Calibi mani, Yao manifold seems to provide a link between my observations and quantum theory. Representing a Calibi Yao manifold, uh, the starting point for string theory is the idea that a point-like particle of particle physics can be modelled as one-dimensional objects called strings. So string theory describes how strings propagate through space and interact with each other. In a given version of string theory, there is only one kind of string which may look like a small loop or segment of ordinary string and it can vibrate in different ways. On distance scales larger than a string scale, a string would look just like an ordinary particle with its mass, charge and other properties determined by the vibrational state of the string. In this way, all of the different elementary particles may be viewed as vibrating strings. In string theory, one of the vibrational states of the string gives rise to gravitation, a quantum mechanical particle that carries gravitational force. Therefore, string theory is a theory of quantum gravity. String theory requires extra dimensions of space-time for their mathematical consistency. In the bosonic string theory, Space-time is 26-dimensional, whilst in superstring theory it's 10-dimensional, and in M-theory it's 11-dimensional. In order to, to describe real physical phenomena using string theory, one must therefore imagine scenarios in which these ed extra dimensions would not be dis observed in experiments. But the problem with, of extra dimensions continued to plague string theory these were solved by introducing the idea of compli compli uh, compactification 
in which the extra dimensions curl around each other, growing so tiny that they're extremely hard to detect. So it, 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 essentially it's an attempt to reconcile the equations at the quantum level by making approximations so slender that they don't infect, affect the internal symmetry of the results. The problem is that string theory offers no real way to determine exactly which of the many calabi yau manifolds is correct. Uh, these manifolds not only preserved the uh, handedness of the particles, but they also preserved supersymmetry, just enough to replicate certain aspects of the standard model. One benefit of the Calabi Yau manifold is that the geometry of the folded dimensions give rise to different types of observable particles in our universe. If the Calabi Yau shape has three holes, or rather higher dimensional analogues of holes, three families of particles we will predict it by the standard model of particle physics. Unfortunately, there are tens of thousands of possible calabi yau manifolds for six dimensions. So string theory offers no reasonable means of determining which is the right one. Furthermore, even if physics could determine which was the right one, they'd still have to answer the question as to why the universe folded up the extra six dimensions into that particular configuration. Final comment. I previously argued that string theory was looking like a cul-de-sac. But this somewhat re re resurrects the theory. Uh, there are many physical quantities that it can't yet describe, and it has not. And currently, there, therefore, cannot be tested in a lab. Because of string theory, many apparently different areas of maths have merged together in a smooth but totally unexpected manner. Uh, this means that there must be some truth to string theory itself. String theory appeals to me because it's linked to the concept of the multiverse that a new universe is created with each decision we make. Uh, this has great resonance with what I have learned through meditation. Or are my insights shaped by my albeit limited knowledge of string theory? I don't know. Uh, will it eventually lead to a fundamental theory of matter? A fundamental theory of everything? Well, maybe. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And if you have, can you help me out a little? Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm. And I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated. It really is. I'm When I started this, I was going to do it uh, this, this section. The real magic of Java I was going to issue maybe t every two, three months. Now it's, it's happening maybe every two or three days. So yeah, if you hit the bell, you'll hear about it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Really heartfelt thanks.